Hey everybody, uh, this is Joe here in Houston, Texas. I'm in zone 9A and I am getting ready to redo a lot of my front yard and so I thought I would do a little before and after tour. This side that I'm showing you now is going to remain the same. Go Astros back in the background. Um, I've got this Mutabilis Rose which uh, is really doing nicely. It doesn't have enough room here, uh, but it's it still looks nice here. And the shrimp plant, which gets enormous every year. Here's some more of that uh, mutabilis. And then back here, I've got a pink fire spike. The one in the, I have in the backyard is red, and this one is a really nice hot pink, and, um, and it blooms. It's just starting to bloom, and um, it must be two months uh, behind the red, um, which I thought was kind of funny. Oh, Mrs. Doubtfire took 0, 0.0 seconds to get in the picture. Hello, pumpkin. And then I've got a few of these drift roses that do pretty well out here. They're under a silver maple, which has terrible roots to deal with. Um, and it's kind of the only thing I've found that would live out here under this giant silver maple and so there's several different varieties i think this one is the best one um, it's sort of a single um, i think this is the one called like this oh gosh now i try to tell you that and i can't think of the name of it anyway this is a, a drift rose and it's a single pink one um, and I, it's my favorite and i think it blooms the best so on this side, on the side I'm not messing with really, I've got these big irises that were sort of here when we moved and I've just left them. And then on the other side of the shrimp plant, I've got some uh, blue plumbago and a little bit of white plumbago as well. And then these pentas are looking really pretty. It's taken them a while to look as pretty as I wanted them to. Those are just the regular small ones. And then here, of course, is my favorite, awesome, giant penta. Uh, and um, and I, I really am gonna put some more of that out here. This front bed I redid last year, and it just, I think because of the drought, it just never took off. It just looked terrible pretty much the whole year. Early spring, it looked okay. So I'm gonna tear, move some things and I'm gonna rip some things out and I'm gonna extend the bed. Um, and everything I'm putting in, at least everything I've bought so far um, to put in is a native Texas plant. So I'm trying to be uh, helpful to the environment that way. I'm gonna leave this rose. This is Belinda's dream. And um, I don't know why I can't get this to focus today. And it has not been happy all summer, but finally I've gotten some, some flowers out of it. And I have two more um, down here at the end that I will uh, move actually. So I'm gonna take a lot of things out and just move them and then clear a lot of stuff out and, and completely start again with part of this bed. So I'll move the other Belinda Dream roses here. And then the other thing that's doing nicely is this uh, Salvia Mystic Spires. And so I will leave that. Um, and periodically I have to chop it down, it gets too leggy. And I have another little section over here and, um, and I'll just move those. So that's gonna clear this out. I'll take up all of this Agapanthus um, and so the things I've bought that will go in here and all these cone flowers will go somewhere else. Um, so pretty much I'm gonna just take all of this out. This is a, um, a uh, Monarda that didn't bloom last year. I planted it from seed. I'll probably dig it up and move it and maybe even divide it a little bit. Um, and then all over here, last year I had this completely bonkers Cleome that was like 10 feet tall and I have got it is put up little seedlings everywhere. I'm gonna to have to just weed out what I don't want. Um, the plants, the native plants I've got here to put in, this is a porter weed, and it's a really nice um, butterfly uh, nectar, you know, plant and for bees. And it should get um, pretty big, maybe even seven feet, six or seven feet high. 
This is a Walters viburnum that um, is still blooming. The one I, the ones I have in the back are not blooming. And I think this is, you know, I just got this from the nursery. I don't know how they've got it blooming in the middle of, of uh, you know, November, but that would be great. And then this is a dwarf Barbados cherry. And it is, um, it can be pretty big as well. Um, I, this and the Walters Viburnum, I think I will be keeping trimmed to maybe three or four feet high. I think they'll both get six or seven feet high if I let them. Um, the porter weed, I will let get as big as I want it wants. Uh, they can be really spectacular. And then I've got another porter weed over here, um, which is so, so pretty. So I'll have three and a huge clump. And then back here, one of the things I'm going to add in the shady area is a, um, a American beauty berry. And it will have little white flowers that aren't very showy. But in the fall, it will have um, these wonderful, beautiful pink berries um, that the birds like. And then I will have, this is a, just a native fern, little wood fern, and I'll tuck it back underneath this shade and this ratty old bench is gonna go. And then, so I'm hoping that the uh, beauty berry will fill in. I'll have the ferns down up under there, the bench will be gone, and this beauty berry will take up this space where we took out a big, you can see the, wow, well, there's a stump under there. We took out a big dead tree and then I've got the Jane Magnolias, which would be pretty. And then this is another huge Jane Magnolia here. And then on the side, um, I will leave this um, other huge um, uh, Mutabilis rose. Um, you can see a little bit here, the different colors that it turns. It really starts out this kind of peachy color and then goes pale pink and then goes darker pink as as it matures on the on the shrub and so this has had just a big flush of flowers and um so but i will leave that and then i will leave this pot um with the plumbago and the uh, sweet potato vine in it and it's just looking so so pretty uh this week and then I will take a lot of these things out. We're going to make the bed this wide. We're gonna take all of this so it'll be like this much wider all the way across. And so um, I'll have a lot more room and I will take some of this wonderful, um, this great Penta um, and, uh, and I'm gonna pull some from the back out front so you can see it better and I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do back here maybe another beauty berry where the, all this agapanthus is I'll put that in the backyard somewhere I will probably keep some of this it's a native plant it does well I might put it somewhere else there's a rose I'll move and then I'll move these sort of clump these up as well this is that salvia mystic spires and then the last thing I bought, well, there's two more things I bought. This is a Duranta. I have never grown this before, and um, I'm not quite sure where to put it. I just couldn't, I couldn't live without it in the store. And it turns out it's gonna get pretty big, so I don't really know where to put it. But it's gonna end up here as well. And then the thing that's so spectacular in the backyard is that pink gulf muley grass. And so I've got one here, and uh, I'm gonna buy some more. And so I will have huge swaths of muley grass coming out. I'll have big um, Barbados cherry coming in here. I'll have Walter's viburnum back here. And I'll have a whole bunch of this, uh, the big tall um, porterweed sort of around the tree. And um, so this is the before. You can see it just, it's all this edging is dead. It just looks kind of rotten except for this wonderful, you know, every once in a while I'll have something that's gorgeous. So, um, so stay tuned for this because in the next two weeks, this is going to get ripped out. All right. Well, y'all wish me luck. <laughs> Have a great night. Bye-bye. <laughs>